Hi, spiritual explorers. I hope this finds you well and joyful. Welcome to our vlog series on how to start or maintain a meditation and mindfulness practice. I'm Marilyn, the Karma Yugi working with Clear Sky Retreat Center. It's a real pleasure to consider you in our community of practitioners, beginners to senior meditators, spiritual seekers who want to make a difference in the world. We are so delighted to share with you the passion of being alive with clarity and joy. I have with me today two of our precious teachers at Clear Sky, Karen and Duncan. Welcome. Hi, Mary. Hi, everyone. We chose a question uh, from our past online course, Ignite Your Spiritual Life. A student asked, how can I make a difference in the world without burning out? Oof, that's a good one. The mic is yours. Okay, thanks, Mary Lynn. That was, that's a great question. What was the name of the person who asked the question? Uh, Charles. Okay, thank you, Charles. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. yeah, I appreciate you asking that question. So we all want to make a difference in the world. And the world currently is kind of a scary place, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff that's going on that we are not really happy about, you know, politically, environmentally, socially. And as spiritual explorers, you know, this can be quite depressing. This can be quite upsetting, right? And, um, you know, you read in self-help books um, and in, in journals of, of uh, looking after your health that you, in order to have true transformative change, you need to start with yourself, right? And that's very true. And what we'd like to give you is in order to not burn out, you need to actually not just look at solely at your meditation and mindful, uh, mindfulness practice, but look at your whole life. And we have five guiding principles or tips that we'd like to talk to you about that would help you actually prevent burnout in your life. Is there anything you want to add there? Yeah, it, it's a great question because it's a kind of maxim, right? You read that the inner, the inner world, the outer world is a macrocosm of the inner world. Um, so if we're greedy or confused or angry in our inner worlds, that gets reflected in the, in the world outside. So that's where you sometimes read, you know, change, change yourself first. Um, but I, I find, we find there's a great halfway house from running a retreat center is, um, you know, how do we really shape our immediate environment? How do we shape the communication, the community, how the space, the space is, the structures and routines in that? Um, so this is what we can control. We can't change the, the whole world uh, immediately, but we can change our environment. And that, that both is an exploration of, you know, what is in our world that, that we can affect, that to be more sustainable, more local, uh, more community orientated um, and also really gives us that support structure to to have that foundation to be our best and most compassionate self if you're bur if feeling like you're burning out or if you there's there's depression there or there's sadness or whatever you know the best thing you can do actually for yourself is look around at your space right mm -hmm. um because maybe your bed's not made maybe your kitchen's a mess maybe your meditation room doesn't look quite nice you know so actually looking at your own environment and, and, and seeing it as a reflection of your inner environment and then making adjustments in, to that will create um, and start to promote the clarity and joy that you want to have in your being every moment of awareness every day. Yeah, it's funny, right? We say, oh, the world's a mess, but maybe at the same time, our own space is a mess. <laughs> so what we can't immediately change the world, but we can start with our own environment. So, so one thing um, it really is just having a, a clean, open, uh, spacious environment as best that we can uh, and we'll talk some some tips on that but if you walked into a space that's really well cared for and spacious you, your mind state changes instantly you feel just ah and you can create that space for yourself and it, it's so powerful and it will give you that that support to regenerate and to be and to be creative mm. um, and then also you know living things like plants you know making your environment have some contact with nature so we're trying to change the world. We're trying to be in contact with the environment. So just sim a simple way of having plants and reminding ourselves to tend and look for these is a lovely way of just keeping that heart connection. Mm. Um, and for me, I find very effective for bringing some kind of joy and to my space is, is art, right? Mm. I'm, I'm a bit of a, an art nerd. Um, and I spent many years actually in Japan, and, and so they pay very close attention to what art is in what room. Um, and they will have 
you know, a summer painting during summer, or they have a lot of paintings that have a lot of water in them. To so when the when the person looks at the painting, they get because it's so hot in Japan, you get really cool down. So you know, you could do that with your own mind state. You know, you could say, well, what pictures? What are my mind states that I tend to get into that lead to burnout? You know, do I end it? When I'm in burnout, is that, am I agitated? Am I sad? Um, is there a sense of frustration? And then maybe choose art that you know by looking at them will take you out of those negative states or those states that bring you into burnout. And, and you know, just very simple stuff like that, you know. So I have some beautiful Japanese art that I put around my home that are um, very Zen-like actually, but um, when I look at it, it just brings this clarity to my mind. Yeah, I love the, we read somewhere as well, you know, have things around you that bring you joy. So for example, we have a table that's, uh, you know, from local Ontario wood where we live, made by a local craftsman. And then every time uh, we look at that, it sort of reminds us of that connection, the community, um, you know, so we have, we have joy and it, it brings inspiration. And especially you're trying to change the world. Um, you know, it can be, there's challenging times and it can feel overwhelming. So having these touchstones, this inspiration, this beauty reminds us actually, what are we working for? And brings us back to that heart connection. Um, and I think the last thing, we won't talk much about it here, but there's a lovely blog we'd like to point you to, is really nourish yourself. So honoring our space is a way to nourish ourselves. And then actually really taking care of ourselves in terms of local organic food and good structures around that is important. And uh, Michelle Hines, one of our uh, members here has just written a beautiful blog you can see below. Um, yeah, so we hope these tips help and uh, we'll, we'll talk more, but go make a wonderful, amazing, compassionate difference in the world. Yeah. Yay. Yay, courage. Thank you so much. That was great tips. And uh, as Duncan said, look down here. You can see some link to our website and online courses and blogs. And we invite you warmly to post your question. Maybe we'll answer it next time. Have a good day, everyone. Okay, bye everyone. Bye bye. May this benefit all beings. May this benefit all beings. beings.